heck am I doing? I am feeling better. Wow, I'm feeling better. Hello guys, welcome to the last video of the year. Uh, this is the Sphericator. This makes all of your edible pearl dreams come true. So on the last video, I kind of teased the idea that I wanted with it being Christmas, I wanted to do like a Christmas dinner theme thing. There's two reasons I'm not doing that. One, it's very much Christmas, I just went in the shops and everyone is buying Christmas dinner things, it was horrendous. The other reason was I want this to work because if you remember the uh, Will It Soda Stream video with Stuart, <laughs> I have an idea to do a Will It Sphericate uh, video with Stuart or maybe with someone else. Also, I've got an idea for a uh, Will It Crap, Will It Crap, and Will It Slush Puppy, but we'll uh, do videos on those individually, first of all, to test out, see if those things work, and then have some fun with your suggestions. Oh, Sferificator, whoops. Uh, the Sferificator is the world's first automatic caviar pearl former. After years of research and development in our own sferification plant, imagine having one of those. Handheld device that will produce up to 10 kilograms of pearls every day. Every day? Like, you wanna do it like, right, oh, it's time for my pearl making. 10 kilos is a lot of pearls. It's basically this, it looks quite flash, a bit, you know, like a coffee grinder or something like that, but uh, still a little button that I guess makes it do its thing. And, uh, science. There's a few other things in the box. Um, charger thing. It's a UK one. We've got uh, a booklet that tells us all about it. It's got some recipes. So I'm gonna follow a couple of recipes from this. Now, as you guys know, I'm a little bit of a scientist, so I don't really need to explain this too much, but it actually comes with some uh, chemicals which help to do reaction to actually create the scarification uh, process. One of them is sodium alginate. Uh, it's not actually labeled these two. Uh, and the other one's calcium chloride. So I'll need to do some research. But some of the recipes I looked at them the other day, they said they needed something called sodium citrate and I couldn't find it in the box. So I ordered a massive tub of it online because it's the only one that would arrive in time for Christmas. And it's due to arrive any minute now. Open the box a little bit more and next to the power plug, literally this morning was this. So uh, yes. It came with these um, nozzle things and at the bottom of it, there is a thread, but I'm wondering if it just dollops out of there or I have to screw these in, because they do have holes. I wonder if these are like different filters are changing them or something. I'll work that out. Never wash under running water. Not dishwasher safe, not waterproof. Always follow, so basically I need to keep this as far away from water as possible, even though I'm putting fluid into it. Okay. So we'll start off with a nice one, uh, which I think lemon should be. Then we're gonna do a tomato one, which we'll try with uh, mozzarella and basil served together. And then there's a cheeky hot sauce one at the end. But first of all, I really do need to understand which one is which. That's, that's pretty dangerous to not even label it. Well, it is with me around. We've got it, folks. The calcium chloride is the one that's a bit more like beanbag filling, all right? I'm gonna get a Sharpie and write on that right now. Calcium chloride, beanbag filling, and, and sod alge, okay. First one we're gonna go for is the lemon one, which is, of course has got citrus in it, which is a hard word to say if you're Sean Connery. But of course, with it having acidic in it, we're gonna to need to add that extra bit of sodium citrate thing. So all three things first up. Grab yourself a blender, blender base, 150 mils of water, three quarters of a teaspoon of sodium citrate. All this white powder lying around my house. People are gonna wondering what I'm doing in here. If any of you guys have got ideas of what I can do with this stuff, as I say, I've got a huge parcel of it coming. I'll let me know. So this goes in there. Ooh. Blend for 30 seconds. Now that is a very powerful blender, I'm gonna give it like 10. Five teaspoons of sugar gets mixed with half a teaspoon of the sodium alginate. So that's the thickener, but also the sugar's gonna sweeten it to balance the lemony uh, tartness, I think. So the sugary, uh, sciencey mix goes in there again. The only other thing we need to do is flavor it with lemons. 100 mils of lemon juice. When life gives you lemons, there's that phrase, right? But what do lemons give you? I don't know. Does, do you get 100 mils out of one lemon? That's why I bought two. Oh, I love this thing. Oh, wow. If you ever wondered, life gives you 50 mils of lemon juice when life gives you one lemon. Pretty much 100 mils of lemon juice. That's going in there. Yeah, I mean, look, it's, it's quite thick at the moment. Uh, so, yeah, we'll get that in. Nice. It kind of looks like semi-set jelly. <laughs> let rest for 30 to 45 minutes to let the air escape. Not my words, folks. The words of science from that book. 
Oh wow guys, can you see the bubbles on it? Yeah, they were a lot more about five minutes ago, so you can, I guess, see that it is worthwhile resting it. Tomato caviar, 50 mils of water, sodium citrate again. I think all the things I'm planning on doing have sodium citrate. Yeah, dissolve that. Why didn't I just do that instead of the uh, blender a minute ago? And then we'll add this in with the tomato sauce. Mixy, mixy, mix. Half a teaspoon of sugar again. And the alginate thing. Me and the Nate dog had to alginate. I'm like sitting here thinking right now, imagine if you could like blend up dog biscuits, a little bit of water, and give dogs pug pearls. Oh, there you go, huh? You're not even facing me? Sorry, um, she hates Christmas. I, I think the phrase is bar hum pug. <laughs> Blending the tomato for an unnecessarily short amount of time. Then adding in that sugar alginate mixture again. If it's alginate, you guys are gonna be like, it's an alginate the whole time. <laughs> it's really thickened already, wow. Uh, let's get that into a bowl. And again, we leave it to rest. Just like that guy down there. And those guys down there. And this guy over here. All right, so out you come. Look at that. Can't see any air bubbles in that one, but we do leave it to rest. I'll clean up and we'll do another one. Hot sauce pearls. Water again. Half a teaspoon of sodium citrate again. Sugar being mixed with the alginate stuff again. Water in there. Woo! Sugar mix is going in. We know the drill by now. Now goes in the hot sauce. 60 mils of this is going in. Oh my gosh. Which is about half a bottle. Okay, I'm gonna put in two thirds. It's gonna be hot. And look at those bubbles. I was not expecting that. There was a really cool mint recipe in here as well. No pun intended, Wait, uh, But we didn't get mint. There was none in the supermarket, but we do have basil. So we're gonna make a basil bonus pearl, okay? Because we need that for the tomato and mozzarella thing. We need like one leaf. So we don't wanna leaf it right there. We'll make some basil pearls. The citrate again, basil. Yeah, I'll do. It's green. Sugar and the algotate thing again. Look at the foam on it. I feel like I'm gonna be one of them fitness healthy channels. Oh yeah. In that goes, oh wow. It fizzed up then like a, like a sort of Harry Potter kind of potion. And this is a mixture of 50 grams of water, 50 grams of sugar, like a poor man's sugar syrup, equal parts, 50-50. Oh yeah. Bubbles as well. Definitely not as acidic but I do feel like the consistency of all of the fluids you made are very similar. Wow, that's pretty cool. Uh, so they are resting, as we know, some have had a little bit longer than others. In fact, the other one is probably ready now, up to 45 minutes to aerate. They each get individually sieved, uh, just to sort of make it nice and fine, I guess, and then dunked in some water, mixed with a little bit of the calcium chloride, and then, through this spherificator. Yep, so I can get this bit ready. This is what they'll all be uh, passed through the spherificator into. 500 mils of water and that calcium chloride, which does look a lot like polystyrene balls. We basically want to dissolve that up. We'll get sieving and then we'll get sphering. So only sphere. So this can go on top of a jug, which is good because it's got a spout so we can easily get it in this. Oh wow, there's a real foamy top on it still but we're gonna pass it through the sieve. Now, the sieve actually is one of the most annoying things to wash up normally. Uh, I guess this is making it smooth. Power goes in here. Ooh, and there we go. That's the inside of it. And can you see, if you look very closely there, it all filters through that little hole there. So maybe that's what starts the process. Something happens in here, and then we put it into our chloride mix. I've just got a fear though, I'm gonna pour it in and it's gonna come out straight away. Oh, it's not. This is going on, okay. Press the button on the spherificator and drop the lemon solution into the calcium bath and leave to sit for one minute. It's science time. It all comes down to this. Oh my gosh, here we go. Oh. <laughs> look, it's like weeing. They might not look perfect, but I think we might have got something. 
Oh, I just got to run this thing dry now because it's the only way I'm going to clean it out, isn't it? Apparently I can't put it in the water. Okay, it's been a couple of minutes. I'm mulling over thinking, how am I going to clean it out? I'm not worried about that right now. Let's just see if the first batch has worked. So in goes this. Oh my gosh. Uh, okay, what's this? It's all a bit, some of it's stringy. Hang on a sec, let me try and get it on a spoon. This is great. This, is, this isn't so good, that bit. Don't get too excited with it. Make sure you fire it like in little bits. It does say to give it a wash and strain it one more time. Look, lemon spheres, look, that's awesome. And it's a bit stringy, but look, that is really good spherificated lemon right there. Apparently when it comes to cleaning this thing, the best thing to do is drain it entirely, which I just done, and then just keep topping it up. So the first ones might have some traces of other bits, but it's all good. That's not going through at all. Oh! What the heck am I doing? I just, I just spherificated a blob of tomato sauce. I mean, it worked. Do I even need this? Yeah, well, it's joined together. Look at that. Bigger chunks than before. I feel like I should have put the small nozzle on that one. Uh, the heck is going on? Remember, these are their recipes. Oh yeah, that's pretty weird looking, I'm not gonna lie. First one or two might be red still. Yeah, I mean, the last few on that one, the foam uh, was even getting in there as well. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, wow. It's like my Christmas tree. So it's all got a bit crazy. The water was draining off, so I had to use a tea towel just to soak it up a bit. But I'm going to present this to you the way it should be. Proper caviar on a silver spoon. On our first spoon, ladies and gents, are the lemon ones. And they look sensational. The shape is awesome. Uh, it sounds good. This is a good thing. It looks like the sort of thing that you might get your mum for a bubble bath for Christmas, but I'm happy with this one. All right, so this is the second one, uh, the tomato one. Uh, it's ended up looking a bit more like baked beans or even blood vessels, but they suggested serving it with a slice of mozzarella and some basil, so I have done just that. This next spoon doesn't really want to stay still. It's the hot sauce one, which was, I don't know, just like lumpy porridge. But if you look at it, actually, to a degree, there are some sort of spheres in there. It has, I guess, still worked and certainly gonna have the kick in flavor. And last but not least, this is the basil, uh, which despite the foamy topping when we uh, sieved it out, actually, again, looks okay. The best verification is a lemon one, but this still works. And you could put a little bit of it on top of your tomato one and have like a proper basil and tomato verification thing going on. So there we go. Okay, let's have a quick taste test. The other thing I've been thinking while I've been doing this whole process is, is this like an alternative to jelly for like vegans and vegetarians by not using gelatin? I don't know. Lemon. Oh, wow. That is bitter. And like, a frog spawny. Oh my God, it's so like slippery. And salty. It still tastes a bit acidic. Mmm. Like not, not, not even lemony bitter actually towards the end. Ugh. Ugh. The tomato one, I'm going to take this with some basil, I think. Oh, to be honest, I didn't even taste the tomato. That tastes pretty good. I'll have some on its own. Ooh, that actually tastes better than the lemon one. That's really sort of sweet. It's, it's, it's actually just like having a little bit of salsa. That, that, that works. Hot sauce porridge mush. Ah, wow. Ooh. That went right to the back of my throat, like speckled. Boof. Ah, ooh. That's got some heat, but again, that texture. I grew up eat, like eating tapioca and, and rice pudding and stuff like that, and so I like that kind of texture. It's just weird in that sense. And my last minute, Basil, also sometimes my nickname, Oh, wow. That did have some sugar added to it as well, but that, you can really taste the sweetness in that. I mean, basil's a fairly sweet herb anyway, but like, I like that. It's got a real nice punch to it. So this, oh, should we do it? Yes. Look at that. Basil and tomato on one. 
That was pretty darn good. This has been up there with one of my top three strangest experiences. I can't talk about the other two. So there we go. It wasn't ideal at times, but I now know how to use it. So if you'd like to see a Will It Spherificate video with a fellow YouTuber, do let me know what you'd like to see a Spherificate. I'll experiment with it a little bit more and we will no doubt make that video. Thank you so much for all your support in 2018. This is my last proper film video. We've crawled over the line the last couple of weeks because I've been the ill health in our house. We've all been like Gollum. Blah. But thank you so, so much. Uh, the last video of the year will be a, a montage of 2018's best bits. Thanks so much. Have a great Christmas and New Year. And I'll see you soon. Check your level player. No matter what your style, the kitchen's for me. Simon's mustache, goatee, maybe all three. Oh, actually, one more idea. Check this out. Now it's double lemonade. Awesome. Right, now run along. Go eat lots of food and have a lovely festive season. And we'll kick butt in 2019, I hope.